Shalom to you from oneforisrael.org. This week we are looking at the Torah portion from Leviticus chapters 16 to 18 called After the Death or in Hebrew Acharei Mot. At the heart of this wonderful parasha is the question, how are we humans to approach a loving yet holy God? This question may seem obsolete for Jews and all people today, indicating they come to God in their own way and in their own path. But in fact, the scriptures tell us that it is not us who determine how we come to God, but rather that God himself determines how we come to him. While many may not like it, this is one of the main points of this parasha. Our portion tells about the high priest. He is the supreme spiritual authority in Israel and the one that is allowed to go into the very presence of God once a year. The account begins when the two sons of Aaron, who are priests and potential future high priests, make a hasty decision to enter uninvited into the Holy of Holies, into the presence of God. It is difficult to understand what they were thinking, but it seems clear they were just attempting to approach God in their own way and in their own path. In Leviticus 10, 1 and 2 we read, Now Nadav and Avihu, the sons of Aaron, each took his censer and put fire in it and laid incest on it and offered unauthorized, literally strange, fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. And fire came out from before the Lord and consumed them, and they died before the Lord." Wow! Remember, these were priests and future high priests, and the message is clear. We come to God in the way He sets before us, not in whatever way we may deem fit. Our portion continues by detailing some very specific instructions on who and how enters God's presence. As we said earlier, it is only one man, the high priest, only once a year on the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, in a specific way, atoning first for his own sins and for a very specific purpose, covering the national sins of Israel. Many Jews today think that on the Day of Atonement they somehow pray and fast and find forgiveness for the sins they committed during the whole year. This is completely wrong. Let me try to describe you the scene that took place in Jerusalem for thousands of years before the temple was destroyed. On the holiest day of the year, the Day of Atonement, a great multitude of Israelis are gathering in the temple courts. In the inner court, where only the priests were allowed, the high priest prepared to enter all by himself into the Holy of Holies. No doubt, in the weeks before the event, he was preparing his own heart spiritually for this moment, searching his soul and repenting for his personal sins. On the practical side, he also put his family affairs in order, knowing his entrance to God's presence, if not done exactly as commanded, may result in his untimely death. The Jewish traditional writings comment on this moment and say that a rope was tied around the high priest's waist in case he died in the Holy of Holies and the priests outside would need to drag him out. As the moment approached, the high priest lay his hand on the head of his personal sacrifice and confessed his personal sins. Then the priests brought a special once-a-year sacrifice for the whole of the nation of Israel, and the high priest laid his, head on, his hand on its head and confessed the national sins of Israel. And then, while all the multitudes were praying in the temple courts, the priests were praying in the inner court, the high priest passed through the veil and entered the holy place into the very presence of God. He stood before the mercy seat and atoned for the national sins of Israel. So what does all that mean for us today? As we know, 
for 2,000 years, there is no temple and there is no way to fulfill the Mosaic Covenant. So how are we to come to God today? God has given us a very clear answer through the Jewish prophets hundreds of years before the temple was destroyed. The Messiah himself will provide the way into God's presence. As it is written, when the Messiah appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once and for all into the holy place, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. God declares today, all can come to him freely, only by the grace of Yeshua the Messiah. Please join us next week for another installment of Five Alive. Wishing you God's Shalom from One for Israel. And don't forget to share. Our ministry, One for Israel, is an initiative of native-born Israelis on the forefront of media and high-tech evangelism, boldly proclaiming salvation to Israel. Raising up leaders and equipping them with the tools they need to transform our communities. We also provide humanitarian aid to Holocaust survivors with the love of Yeshua. Join us as we share the gospel in Israel. Become one for Israel.